Hello and welcome to AFI Fest presented by Audi. My name is Sarah Harris. I am the Director of Programming for AFI Festivals. I want to thank all of our supporters of the festival, including our presenting sponsor, Audi, our AFI members, and you, our audience. I'm joined today with the Director of Tragic Jungle, Yolani Olazana, and, <laughs> and Indira Andruin, who played Agnes in the film. Hi, ladies. Welcome. Thank you. Thank Hi. you for having us. I am uh, just so thrilled to be able to talk to the two of you today. Um, congratulations on the film. I'm not supposed to have favorites of the festival, but this is one of them. And um, because all the films are my babies, they're all, <laughs> they're all important. But Tragic Jungle is one of those films that when um, uh, when I was, you know, I reached out to you, Yolanda, and like, and I think asked for a link and, and I was able to watch it and I just went to the team and I was like, this is, this is such an amazing, provocative, enchanting, mysterious film. And I was so excited to talk about it. And I just was like, watch this now. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really, um, it's really a, a true cinematic experience, and so I want to congratulate you first on, on making the film and completing it and getting here to this day. So the first question I have um, is, I'm kind of curious about how you came to this idea, and was it the Mayan legend that kind of brought you here, or was it the jungle, and the, I think I read something about the location itself, like what brought you to this story? In all of my films, the first ideas start for me with a place where I want to shoot, where I want to shoot. So in this case, everything started like 10 years ago when for the first time I traveled to Chetumal and the border between Mexico and Belize. And I actually tried to cross to Belize to spend some holidays there, but I couldn't because I didn't have the right permits in my car. But since then, I went back many times to this area uh, and I started to fall in love with the Mayan jungle and the idea of, of having this very thin border between Mexico and Belize, which is only the, the Ondo River, a very small river that you can actually cross by swimming if you want. Uh, and I started to, to do research about Belize and the relationship with Mexico. I think ma many people in Mexico doesn't know anything about Belize unless you live close to the border. We don't have much, uh, I don't know, much relationship like as with the States or probably with Guatemala. So I just discovered like a new country, a new neighbor, and it was really exciting for me. And then afterwards I moved to this area to start doing research and I discovered or found out about the Mayan legends around the jungle. And I discovered this legend about the woman Eshtabai, which is really famous in that area, also in Belize. Uh, and I just, uh, I just fell in love with the mystery surrounding the jungle, the legends, the idea of talking about two countries which are only separated by a river, and especially to I was drawn about the, the how, how was the life 100 years ago in that area, in the early 20s, when everything was almost uh, isolated. There was only the jungle. There were no big civilizations there or big cities or anything. Yeah. And there was an industry that started to become really important, which, which is the gum industry, the chewing gum. It became huge in Mexico. So I just decided to start trying to mix all these ideas. And later, probably a year later, I started to write the script to mix all these ideas about le Mayan legends people from Belize crossing into Mexico, people from Mexico crossing into Belize, the chewing gum, and that's how the world of Tragic Jungle began. Dira, did you know about the legend before getting involved in this? Yes, definitely. 
Um, I grew up hearing about this legend like all the time. We have several of them and the Ishtabai is definitely a major one. I just remember like my friends and my family, they would go to the farm and when they came back, they would say, oh, like I saw the Ishtabai and everybody was just like thinking, oh my gosh, like this is real. Like it's just ingrained in our culture and it's a major part of Belize. What were your initial thoughts when you read a script or I guess at what point were you brought in um, by Yelene to, to be a part of the film? Were you, were you excited by it? Were you like, oh, I know I, this, this story is from yeah. me? Um, I when know. I first heard about it, I was visiting my dad in a village, which is a Creole village. And um, my mom called me and there's no like internet, there's barely phone service. So I was surprised that she called me and she's like, oh, I just saw an audition on Facebook for, they're looking for the Ishtabai and um, a young Creole girl. And I was like, and they want to shoot in the jungle. And I was like, well, like that's so me. I've grown up in the jungle and I am this young Belizean girl. And like the Ishtabai is so close to our culture. So I was just like, this is me. And I was super excited to do it. I think your mom sent photos of you. Yeah, you know, yeah, my mom. The first time. <laughs> yeah. I, I received an email from her mom. Yeah, I had no idea about it. My mom, she always puts me in these situations, but it always <laughs> turns out to be great. <laughs> I love it. That's how we met, actually, because of your mom. Yeah. <laughs> so but I another love thing I, I think about this film is how the jungle itself is a character to the story, and um, it's such it's such a strong and powerful character. It's brutal to, to everyone. Uh, <laughs> I I'm curious if you were you know having so you moved there and you were kind of engrossing yourself in that area. How deliberate were you in when you were right you know creating this world about the brutality of nature and and wanting that to be kind of a force in and of itself. I don't know, just what was the thought on that? I think I, I knew from the early beginning that the jungle uh, would be a, a one of the important characters of the film. And I think it's something that has defined my work as a filmmaker that I uh, put a lot of attention in the places and I try to portray the places where I shoot like characters. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it's really, really important the experience of being able to transmit to the audience the uh, how does it feel to live and to experience one special place. Not just to tell a story, but to be able to share also the feelings of being there the experience of being there. So I, I think I've worked before in a similar way in different places, like in a volcano, for example, with my previous film, Epitaph. So in this case, I knew I would try to do the same, but with the jungle. So that's why for me, it's really important to spend some time living in the places, doing research. So I moved for uh, four months to, to a house in Bacalar without internet signal, without telephone signal, and doing research, talking to the people in the small villages around the place, talking about the Shtabai, traveling around. Yeah. And after that, then you, you have all the feelings and the um, experience of, of really being in the jungle, and then you can write about it. But I'm sure for me, it would, would have been impossible to write the script if I would have stayed in Mexico City in my house, just imagining things, I, I needed to go there and experience the place. Yeah, it, it really is this kind of immersive experience, I think, watching it and you feel, you feel like you're there. Um, it transports you for sure. So, and so, I mean, we have to talk about actually shooting in the jungle <laughs> because, um, that seems very daunting and, and very uh, difficult. <laughs> so what, um, it's such an extreme location. Tell, like, tell us what that was like and, and just, you know, the dangers of it. Um, 
I would be terrified of snakes the whole <laughs> the whole time. I would be just like paralyzed. <laughs> the snakes are the most dangerous thing, no? Besides that, it wasn't. I mean, I I grew bad. up in the jungle. I live still currently in the jungle, like surrounded by trees and. It's just a part of me and I think for me maybe it would have been harder to film in the city but I understand it must have been hard for like you Lainey to come from the city to do it in the jungle but for me it was like natural it was my natural environment I felt the most comfortable there snakes aren't a big deal to me <laughs> <laughs> I think that the good thing and the good choice that we made is that India was totally confident about moving in the jungle also, our DOP, Sofia Ogioni, who is a DOP from Colombia, yeah. a woman DOP. She's also uh, confident about shooting in the jungle because she's been doing uh, different films in the jungle. And I spent some, so much time before doing the shooting. So we were, the three of us, we were confident enough and our producers were too. And also the, uh, the producers of the film, Ruben and Pablo, I think they, they took really care of the crew, uh, creating the most comfortable situation to be inside the jungle. Like we had like, for example, a portable toilet inside mm -hmm. the jungle. That was amazing. And we had everything, all the equipment we need. So once we were inside the jungle, it wasn't that bad. We just had to, to be careful with the snakes, for sure. We yeah. had some le local people working with us, uh, searching the, the roads or the small paths, uh, just to be sure that there were no snakes around. Still, we found only in the first two weeks, we found almost like 15 poisonous snakes that we had to move or to transport to another location. But besides that, I think the most difficult thing for the whole crew was to, to move from the hotel to the jungle because we had to drive for an hour or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. So once you get to the location where you're going to shoot, you are already ex exhausted. So you have to wake up really, really, really early to be early on time in the jungle. So those driving sessions are really, really exhausting for everybody. Yeah, yeah. And I also think that, um, you know, the bringing a production into an environment like that is also like you want to keep the jungle, you want to protect the place, you know, the, the environment itself and, and to respect the jungle as much as you okay. can while you're moving around in it, um, just as, as the film itself is kind of reminding us is to be protective of it <laughs> right we did we did we did our best we actually had a, a mayan ceremony before starting the shooting oh cool to, to ask for some good vibes <laughs> like permission to be there no yeah. in a very spiritual way um the other one the other thing that i'm kind of curious about is so we know how you found Indira through her mother um, and the and Facebook, but how talk to us about finding Florence and some of the men and um, kind of like your your casting process because um, it seems I mean it's a very local um, come on community focused project as well. Mm -hmm. The casting process was something really crazy, and it took me like a year and a half to actually find the whole gang of men and. Well, everybody in the in the movie. Yeah, I started going to different small communities in the south of Quintana Roo, looking for communities who are actually still working in the gum industry. So at the end, I did research in about six different communities, and I did casting there. I think I probably watch or interview around 80, between 80 and 100 men from those communities. Then I also went to Belize, which where it was also really hard because in Belize they, they don't have like a, a, like a cinema community or theater groups. 
So all the advertising we did was on Facebook, Twitter, and I just traveled to Belize and I, I received like between 20 girls and probably 10 men only for the casting auditions. Um, and then I also did some casting auditions here in Mexico City because at some point I knew that I, was, I, I wasn't going to be able to, to form this gang of chicleros or gum workers only with local people. I knew that I, I had to work with professional actors as well. So I started to do auditions here in Mexico City for a few characters. Uh, and then we started to add the other characters. We, we worked with uh, an American actor, Dale Curley, who plays uh, the British guy, for example. So the whole casting is a mixture between everything, a little bit of everything, non-professional actors, professional actors, people from Belize, from Mexico, from the States, uh, from Mayan, Mayan communities. So it, it was really hard and it took me a lot of time and I did it personally, like I, I didn't hire someone to be in charge of the casting process. I basically do it by myself and des design the test by myself with the help of Ruben, uh, my co-producer and co-writer and co-editor and partner. Uh, so it was a long, long process. But for example, with Indira, I remember that as soon as I saw her photos, the photos that her mom sent, I kind of knew that, that she was my best option. And I called her, I remember that we did a, a video call and it was the only one that I chose to phone her just to make sure that she was going to be able to go to Belize City for the casting auditions, which is like eight hours away from her place wow. from the place where she lives yeah and I had absolutely no acting experience and this was something totally totally new for me I had done a little bit of modeling before but yeah I was just excited because like Eleni said we don't have an industry for acting or anything like that and it just felt like a huge opportunity and of course I was going to take it and now you have the acting bug yeah do you want to do, do more acting yes you... definitely if the opportunity comes then, yeah. I think it might after this. <laughs> I hope we'll see. For right now, I just hope everybody enjoys the movie and then we'll see what happens afterwards. Uh, well, I think, I think you're going to have a lot of fans after the release of this film. It's, uh, it's, a, good, it's a good path. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think we actually have to wrap it up, but uh, I just want to thank you both ladies for, for being here and talking about this wonderful film and I wish you all the best with it and I'm uh, really excited that it's getting out in the world and um, and enjoy the festival run in this very strange pandemic times um, and uh, thank you so much for sharing it with us. Thank you and <laughs> yes thank to, you for having us <laughs> and to say hello to everybody who's watching the film in these crazy moments that we are living in just yeah. to give our support to everybody and <laughs> in these difficult situations. Yes, yes. So if you're at home and uh, there, we're on social media, so we'd love to hear your thoughts about the film and um, all that's happening at AFI Fest this year. So thanks for watching.